Welcome everybody to the Mile High Podcast. This is your host, Dr. Daniel Knowles. Grateful to be back on the podcast with you. And uh, just to remind everyone, you can find this podcast on many different channels, um, Stitcher, iTunes, um, and it's on Facebook and YouTube and on our Mile High blog. And so you, can, when you're at whatever resource you're getting this access to, please make sure that you hit subscribe. We'd love to have to make sure that you catch every single episode that comes out of the Mile High Podcast. And of course, on that note, I also want to make sure that people have on their calendar or have or registered, if they have not already registered, for Mile High, which is coming up August 17th to 20th. So we're just under 180 days away. So we're gearing up to make the best event Ever. We have a stellar lineup. It's going to be incredible. You can register at www.milehighchiro.org. And I will also mention uh, we just recently had our first diamond exhibitor sponsor step up, which is Cairo Futures, and we're very excited to have their support. The work that Matthew McCoy does for the chiropractic profession in so many different areas is vital. Now, with that, um, I'm very excited to be having on our stage and right now on the podcast. Dr. Curtis Fedorchek, and I'm hoping I pronounce it right. <laughs> Fedorchek. Fedorchek. All right, so I was close. Fedorchek. Um, he is an incredible chiropractic advocate and researcher. He was just named by the Foundation for Vertebral Subluxation Research as the Chiropractic Researcher of the Year. People know him as a chair of research for the GCC, the Georgia Chiropractic Council, um, an adjunct at Life University for five years where he taught CBP. Um, he's a very, uh, he's published numerous research and peer-reviewed research journals um, with Life University, Sherman College, uh, Florida Atlantic, Emory, and it's just a pleasure to have you on. It's a pleasure to have you at uh, Mile High. Welcome to the podcast, Dr. Curtis. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Hey, listen, if you took in more uh, hockey games in Colorado, you'd learn how to say my name. Lots oh, of Chucks there. That's right, true. Fedora Chuck. Yeah. <laughs> you got to go. But, yeah, no, thank you so much for having me. Uh, total honor and uh, just really uh, looking forward to even uh, going to Mile High this year and uh, being a part of that. Well, we're glad to have you there. First off, let's people get to know you personally a little bit. How'd you find your way into chiropractic? Um, real fast, I want to be, I tell patients this like all the time, I want to be a chiropractor since I was 10 years old. I am one of the millions of patients, I'm sure, from the Bohemia family. There's like 42 chiropractors in their family. And uh, my dad was a banker and he looked after all, you know, all these chiropractors. And so um, I've been going since I was 10. You know, just basically, uh, Dr. Jerry Bohemian was his name. He just instilled in me what it was to be healthy. He taught me a lot of stuff as I was growing up. I was very active, played sports all my life, raced motocross. For those who don't know what that is, is where you, you crash a lot. And, uh, and just always, um, he changed my life and, and, and taught me about, you know, how the body worked and whatnot. And just, I always thought, hey, that's something I want to do. And uh, wound up going, obviously. And, uh, but... However, when I got there, like I was blissfully going through life, like loving chiropractic. When I went to, um, I went to the, the local church when we came down, my old wife and I came down to um, Marietta and by accident, this is right when the internet came out, it was like 1998. And I printed, I won't even mention the website because I don't want to give it any, uh, any credence. But I printed out basically a, a website all against chiropractic. And it really destroyed me because I was only second quarter. I didn't have the intellectual... Well, I mean, to you know what to think and so the story goes I tell us about Matt McCoy is there's like 20 kids standing around Matt McCoy and I have this entire website printed out and as I walk up to them they all part ways and I just walk up to Matt and I hand him all these papers and I look at him like help me with this will ya and then he just led me in the right direction of all this stuff to read and at the same time um, I went to um, my our local church that we, these people were so nice to us, and they their daughter had asthma. I'm like, hey, you got to get your daughter adjusted. It helped me with breathing. It's amazing, you know. Chiropractic's the best. Like again, very unskilled in how to convey, you know, to get care. And the guy actually was a rocket scientist for Lockheed. Lockheed, like that was his job. Like he's like, I'm actually a rocket scientist. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and all he said is, um, he goes. Uh, can you just give me some information on chiropractic and asthma? I'm like, absolutely. I go to the largest school in the world. I'm going to go and get some. It's going to be great. And literally, he goes, uh, my staff just brought me some energy drink. It's all healthy, though. 
she literally, she brings, I expect this big car to research, right? And she literally brings back, I'm going to draw this to scale. She brings me back this piece of paper um, with essentially this. And it's, uh, if you see closely, that's uh, some curves and a few token lines. And that's what she gave me to give to the rocket scientist. And I was like, oh gosh, I'm sorry, I'm not being clear. You know, I'm from Canada, Canadian accent. I need all the research on asthma cases. I don't care. Surely there's thousands, which there are. And she goes, that's it. And I was just like, so I had two choices. I'm like, I can tell this guy that I forgot to get any information for his daughter, or I can give him this piece of paper and be like, you know, and try to hide from it. It just really, and again, I know I had my own experiences and I talked to my dad about it. I'm like, Hey, they say all these bad things about a profession. And he goes, so what? He goes, there's no profession without scrutiny. Yes. For example, by the way, I just went to, I've never had a cavity in my life. The only reason I brush my teeth is so my wife will kiss me. That's it, right? Because I mean, they're yellow, no cavities. So I go to uh, I go to the dentist, and a new guy who took over from the old guy, and he says, you got five cavities. I was like, what? Five cavities in the span of like six months. So what do I do? I go for a second opinion, and guess what the other guy tells me? I have zero cavities. Ah. So this has just happened. I'm like, five cavities, zero cavities. Like, see, not everyone's perfect. So it's not, and not that we're looking for that, but I just in chiropractic, I want to see us get better. I want to see, you know, us just get better at what we do, help more people, et cetera. So anyways, my dad told me way back when, he's like, hey, forget about it. He's like, push on, make your profession better. Forget about what people say, because there's always going to be people that have bad things to say about it. So long story short is that, it's always been a mission of mine because I know people like yourself or whoever, thousands of chiropractors before have helped, for example, thousands of people with asthma. However, we may have failed to write it down. Not even write it down, but we didn't take measurements. And I'm a little bit cynical when I say this, and don't anyone get mad at me, but respirometers are like 50 bucks and they're computerized. So you can actually have data on it. And then we can compile like a study. Look, of a thousand people who went to the chiropractor, 950 got better you know what i mean as far as asthma goes and now we're not treating asthma i'm not going to get into that but i'm saying that their body started to function better and as a result you know their asthma symptoms went away and so i've always wanted that for the profession so because for me coming down all the way from winnipeg canada down to georgia with a new wife new location and to find out that you know this is what we had it was very very disheartening thanks Mary. Mm -hmm. so it was just so disheartening to have that happen I just don't want that to happen to anyone. And not that that's how you build a practice, and I get it's one at a time, and I get that, but in today's day and age with social media and stuff like that, as you know, there are people that blog about us very powerfully that we don't have stuff like what's going on in Europe. I'm sure, you know, there's people right. that say they don't even believe in subluxation. I mean, it's just like, so we have kids going to school, spending a quarter million dollars on education, but then there's people across the pond that are saying what they're learning doesn't even exist. So for them, that is a massive stress. And so yeah, I just absolutely. don't, yeah. And, and I'll tell you, um, this is why I so appreciate you and what you do, because there are those in the profession that will say, oh, we don't need research. We have philosophy. And hey, I love our philosophy, but we need yeah. a bedrock of science without yeah. a doubt. And, and what you just went through is why it's so important for every single practitioner to support research, support the VAP yeah. Foundation, to do yeah. case studies, to be actively involved. We have to create a body of research. And look, BJ Palmer, relative to his day, he was obsessive about science and research relative to what was the quality at that time. But Correct. you know, we're, the world has advanced 100 years since then, or 80 years, so we need to do better now. Now with that, what um, you're very involved with the Foundation for Vertebral Subluxation Research, clearly. Sure. Yeah. Um, can you tell people why that is important and what, what some of the things that the foundation's up to right now? We have, I mean, I'll, I'll talk about one thing in particular, but we have so many projects going on that, again, focus on, like, detection of subluxation. Now, I am a CBP guy. Like, that is my technique, right? And so we, I, well, a big part of what we do is x-ray. So uh, just like blood pressure, if you have high blood pressure, well, we want to get it to normal range. Well, with us, we want to see people get, and I know yourself, you've published a paper where you, you saw x-ray changes, which is great. Like we want to see reductions in what we see on x-ray as far as subluxation goes. So what we've done, and here's the backstory to this, our biggest project right now, for me anyway, again, we have, we pro we have like 50 projects and they're all big. Like it's really kind of crazy, but our biggest one right now is diabetes, type 1 diabetes. So the story goes, 
this is about a year ago, uh, a patient of mine, he's a big time CrossFitter, but he sells uh, Dexcom G4 uh, glucose monitors. And what this is, it's about the size of an iPhone, a little bit smaller. And this little sensor goes in your body and it literally monitors your blood sugar every minute. And then it puts it on the graph. So you can see real time your blood sugar. So he walks in and he pulls up his shirt and he has this thing in his stomach. I look at him, I'm like, what are you on under house arrest? Like, are you you're incarcerated? He's like, no, man. He goes, it's a monitor. I'm like, okay. I go, so what does it do? And he tells me, I'm like, well, where do I get one? He goes, I'll, g I'll get you one. And I'm like, well, how much are they? They're like 3,000 bucks. I'm like, okay. You know, it's 100 bucks a week to run these things. So I call uh, Matt McCoy. I'm like, hey, um, we're getting these because I'll be able to see real-time data what happens after you adjust someone, what happens to their blood sugar. So what we did is we had our first guy come in, type 1 diabetic. He's, and we've, we've, already, we've already showed this at um, IRAPS and at the CBP annual. So it's been out. So we have other cases, which is pretty amazing. But we identified in his thoracic spine, he actually was lordotic in his thoracics, which isn't normal, right? I mean, that's not, there's no one that says you should have lordosis in your kyphosis, as I say. And it just happened to be at like T8 through T10. And what's a, what's a killer <clears throat> is he has an MRI that shows he had, they even said in the MRI report, lordotic segment T8, T9. So I'm like, wow, it's about as subluxated as it gets. He had other things going on, and again, we've written it up already, um, and that we started uh, actually changing the shape of that vertebrae at that area, and on his monitor, when we did that, the, his blood sugar would be like normal, and then also, not normal, so it would be high, and then it would start tanking. But what we did first was really important, is we made him wear it for two weeks, and we did nothing to him. We said, don't get care, don't get massage, don't get a pat on the back, nothing. Don't change your diet. And this guy, he drank, What it's so funny, he'd come with like a liter of like Sprite or Mountain Dew with a massive cookie. And I'm looking at him like, well, yeah, don't change your diet, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and so, and we got his A1C values and we have, and what this meter does, and again, we have this all written up, is it shows, it graphs your sugar like all day long. And so, it's high, it's high, and even after he meter for a couple weeks, it even went higher. So, it's not like he was change just from looking at it, you know what I mean? Like, so that was his, uh, his intro period, if you will. Then we started taking care of him. It dropped approximately 15 to 10 points, and this is a type one diabetic, every week or so as we took care of him. Now, I'm excited, I called in the came out, what does it what change? change? He goes, oh, he goes, it's amazing. amazing. We dropped we your dropped blood sugar blood like, blood. you know, 25 30 points he goes over a six months to a year and their a1c goes down a half a percent i'm like wow a half a percent he goes yeah that's like that's how they got approval from the fda these monitors and this is like this is what he sells for a living right i'm like well hey well we've dropped it uh like 1.1 like percent in eight weeks and he was just like what i'm like yeah and he goes, that's crazy. I go, so what's the company best? Like, what's the company? Like, on your studies, on your trials, it got you approved. He goes, the company best is a, it's a percent. I'm like, so wow, we beat that in eight weeks. And he's like, kind of, well, that's cool. He goes, did you get a C peptide test? I'm like, what's that? And, you know, we're just learning about diabetes, right? And he goes, it's a measure of whether or not your pancreas is actually making, you know, insulin. I'm like, okay, let's get one. So this is the bad news is that we didn't get a baseline of C peptide because we didn't know any better. And when we got it back, it said less than 0.1. But we don't, we don't know. We can't find a more sensitive test. So we don't know if he actually started making insulin or not. At this point, we say no. But his blood sugar went from 178 average down to like 130 in eight weeks. And his A1C went from 7.8 to like 6.9, which is, you know, or 6.7, sorry, which is huge. And every the kicker is every single time. Here's my here's my high tech device. Every single time we after he left 20 minutes after care. Boom, his, his um, sugar would drop, it would plummet. And he wasn't, he actually reduced his insulin. So that's huge. So it's not like he was using insulin and it would drop. It doesn't like it coincide. Like we actually, because it's time, like every, this machine keeps track of like every minute of every day. We know when we adjust them. We can show you where we adjust them and where it went down. So it's absolutely amazing. So we're like, well, it works on one, it works on another. So we now have four cases every single time and these people all have the same presentation so we have inclusion criteria every single time that we put these people after care 20 minutes after i have a lady that actually she she does research 
in the world of diabetes. Like she meets with the world leaders of diabetes. We have her under care. And she is blown away. Because every I can show you, like I'll show you the pictures. I think I did. Didn't I send you, you a did. picture? Well, I'm gonna say that yeah. your enthusiasm about this is so strong. You actually sent me, you know, some some pictures I've got on my yeah. phone, like of the yeah. screenshots. You're like, this is amazing. Yeah. And, and we need that in chiropractic. Yeah. She was blown away. She's like, how is this even possible? She like she meets with the world leaders in diabetes, and she's like, how is this even happening? I'm like, we actually don't know yet. I go, but here's our hypothesis, and you know, we got to do more. So now we're actually. Uh, Matt released a press release because now we've had four case uh, studies or case series that is right now We're gonna do like a large number of people the best we can and uh, It is like it's so exciting. It's nerve-wracking at the same time because you're like wow You know are we really on to something, but it's for every case so far. So we're super excited about that I mean, it's just yeah, it's crazy And, and I want to say something while we're still recording because I know your patience in a little bit But um, I want people to hear me say this because I think it's very important for people to get that as chiropractors, we're all in this together. Like yeah. you do CBP, I do network spinal analysis. That are people that, you know, like, oh, there's a history of that, whatever. Look, we need to, as a profession, I think the bar that CBP has set for research is stellar and everything in chiropractic has to aspire to that. Yeah. And I also think that every research thing that upper cervical people do is great. Everything that we all do that's legitimate helps our profession and we need to p compile that evidence and be, right. and be, and like I need to applaud the work that upper cervical work people do and CBP people do and we have to do that together if we're gonna, if we think, hey, I'm not a, a network doc or an upper cervical doc or a CBP doc or I am that, but before that I'm actually a chiropractor and I care about the chiropractic profession. That right. has to come first, you know? And that's I and I, I kind of use this as an example. I'm a I play hockey still. I'm a goalie, and I'm all about I'm all about percentages, right? And uh, I, like a good save percentage out of a hundred shots is like ninety three. That you're in the NHL at that level. You know what I mean? Right. But anyway, so I always say like, look, if someone is getting better percentages than me, like I will go learn from you. You know what I mean? Like right. that's always like my mantra as far as like learn from. I'm also big into kind of keeping our dirty laundry private. Work yeah. it out ourselves what's working better i hate um you know i get frustrated with people don't get me wrong like it's not that it's just that i prefer to have the arguments within our profession so it doesn't make it look bad the um so but one of the things that just like you said we can agree on is that no matter what the mechanism is and then chris kent said this a long time ago you we have conjecture about data which i'm totally in favor of it said is if we're improving health uh of, of people the quality of life people so my next thing and i'm okay for time right now if you're okay for time i'm okay with time i'm, I'm yeah. conscious of you i'm in a yeah. different time zone and that quality gotcha. life project you talked about stellar so great to talk yeah, about that i want to talk about so again since i was young since i got into this i've always wanted to basically because i've heard other chiropractors they just don't have confidence in what they do like they literally don't um they're unsure they don't know they don't like they're literally rudderless no matter what technique they just don't know so i'm so, like well listen you know, you know use what you've learned at school like they prepared you that way but let, one thing we all have in common is we're all improving the quality of life of people. Maybe not everybody, but pretty much. So what I wanted, and this has been thought of and tried a few times, but it was never cost effective. It wasn't uh, conducive for everyone. But what should everybody be doing in, in today's day and age? And what insurance says and compliance, everybody, is we should be doing quality of life assessments. Number one, the most widely used is the SF36. So we have, I know I've, I have used SurveyMonkey for like 10 years. So I have four, five, 600 pre and post SF36s for all of my cases. The problem is it just throws it in data and SF, SurveyMonkey doesn't score it for you. So I have to pay a statistician. I have to rip this data out of an Excel sheet and I can't even score it for people. Like I can just tell them later on like whether or not they're doing good, but it serves me no point to show people because it takes so long to do it. So I'm like, there's got to be a way to have it to where a practitioner can be doing what they're supposed to be doing, like their job, getting people to fill out quality of life assessments, show people, hey, you're getting better, you're no, you're not. And the SF36, it actually uses like eight different or nine different dimensions of emotional well-being, physical well-being, physical functioning, emotional functioning, change of like uh, change of health status, all these things. So, you know, and if we want to get out of the neck and pain realm, this is a great survey. Again, it's been validated over and over and over again with a thousand studies. So we, so we found a guy that can build it that didn't cost me a mortgage, right? 
And so now what we can do is each practitioner, regardless of what you do, like as long as if you're not helping people, then don't be part of this. But you literally can fill the patient fills it out and then it automatically scores it for them. So you can show people, hey, here's your score. Here's where you're at. Here's your baseline. 30 days later, here you are again. So that's just your job. Like my favorite story, a guy in my office, uh, he's with me for four years. Great guy, Dr. David Back. He's a very, very good hockey player. He started playing hockey with my friends and I. And I played like a higher level of hockey for a while, but these guys don't know any better. And I made a save and they were like enamored by what I did. And they all skated away. And then he looks at me like this. He goes, congratulations on doing your job. And I'm like, Shh, people don't know any better. So my <laughs> message to this is, hey, having people fill out quality of life assessments is your job. More or less, it, it's, A, it shows them if, you know, if, how they feel. B, it protects you if you ever, they ever said they weren't. Three, you can use it to publish a case study if you wanted to. But the bigger thing now is, and what we've done is all that, we've created a, a, bay, a website that collects all your data and we get to use it and we can publish on a mass scale. This is all it's gonna say. Practitioners, X sees people an average of X number of times and this is their quality of life changes. So if we have 100, 200 offices, 300, 1,000, and 100 people in a year fill out this quality of life assessment, we now have a 50,000, 100,000 person study that shows what? Going to the chiropractor increases your health-related quality of life. And that's it. And, and who was better and all that stuff? We can work that out later. That's not the mission. The mission is to put chiropractic on the map as far as that goes so people can see, wow. And, it, it's, and, and here's the other thing is like, Insurance, insurance thinks that, you know, we see people five times a year or something like that, right? <laughs> That's because people don't bill insurance past five visits or if they do whatever. You know, I get adjusted every week. Most of our people get adjusted every week or every two weeks at least if they're active. So we'll be able to say, hey, on average, people go to the chiropractor 30, 40, 50, whatever many times a year. And these people show these improvements of quality of life. And in Matt McCoy's vision for years is to show generational changes. So we run this for five, 10, 15 years and we can show quality of life. Um, and, and, and so it's so huge and I've wanted this so, for so long. And the other thing is, I love it, for patients who don't get care, we're like, hey, um, can you fill this out again in 30 days? We're gonna send you a link and we can even document people who don't get care and compare it. So we created something called healthandwellnessscore.com. And we're gonna have, right now we only have the SF36 because again, to get this program costs a lot of money, but we're adding uh, right now the Pete's quality of life, we're gonna add headache, we're gonna add bladder. We're gonna add like any uh, head, like a number of different, probably a ten. We'll max out a ten because that takes a lot of work. And so we'll have ten different validated, accepted quality of life questionnaires. And one more thing on that. Am I okay for time? By the way. Yeah, I'm perfectly good okay. on time. You're the yeah. It's that there's lots of there's lots of um, people that have specific chiropractic questionnaires, which is great. But anytime that's published in just any realm like outside of our profession or outside of their niche market if you will they're going to say well it's not valid in other words if i created a website that says you know does dr curtis have nice looking teeth my patients don't want to hurt my feelings they say yeah he has great teeth but it's not valid right because i have yellow teeth from too much wine but anyways the um the 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 um questionnaires we use are all validated in studies already so they're not questioning the validity of the of the instrument we're using does that make sense yeah, absolutely yeah, so that's why we're going to use the only the most highly validated questionnaires. That way, when we put this out, that you know, people are always going to judge the studies you do and to critique them. But if you have fifty thousand, sixty thousand, hundred thousand people saying that they're qual like showing that their quality of life went up over the course of one, two, three, five, ten years, that is the eight hundred pound gorilla in the room, and that's what I want. So regardless of what you do, whatever, if you're helping people, it's going to show that, and then that's it. Outstanding. Yeah. I'm so excited about that. And we need that for the profession across the board. How do yeah. people how do people get connected to doing that, to being participating? Right. Well, right now we're almost at forty offices and we've only been we've only had it running for like a month. And and how many surveys, I guess it depends. I haven't looked at that, but probably ten to twenty average to where you know people like again, if they're having people fill it out like they should. So you go to healthandwellnessscore.com, click on the link. You can download, um, our web guy hasn't created, so you can sign up online yet, but you can just download a sheet and fax it to us. It costs 99 bucks to register, because believe it or not, I was here till one in the morning last night, entering data of new people. It's actually a job. I mean, I'm like, wow, this is gonna get, this is gonna get a lot busier than I thought. 
and then um, it's 40 bucks a month. But here's the thing. This software, even if people don't want to use like, oh, I already use paper questionnaires, right? They'll never get scored. And when you die, you'll never have published any of that. But all you have to do is use this, get people to fill it out, and we'll publish it for you. And that's the whole thing. Like. Even if um, people have software that, because there, everyone has different um, practice managers software. I'm sure even within your realm, like network, I'm sure not everyone uses the same software. Am I right. correct? Like, right, right. Yeah. So everyone has their own thing and somehow you'd have to get everyone linked up. This is just one thing. Everyone uses it. It scores it for you. So even at the end of the year, if you as a practitioner want to show, hey, here's our statistics on improvement quality of life. We actually, the software is written in there. You can do that yourself. So again, it's, it's all for you. It's for the patient. And it's for the profession because we can take all that data. That's, That's our job and to put out this massive study. study. But that way you're not just paying 40, 40 bucks a month towards, towards research. research. You right. know what I mean? But if you, what we're doing is we're taking, for example, um, for people who sign up with it through, like, through this podcast, if they heard about it, or at Mile High, is we're going to donate 10% towards a foundation because, again, they're the ones who pay for the Dexcom meters. They're the ones who pay for the statisticians that write stuff. Because if you ever got anything published, a statistician is anywhere from four to $6,000 for them to look at an Excel spreadsheet. Right. It's a lot of money. So, um, but yeah, healthandwellnessscore.com. Download it, fill it out. Um, we'll set you up, we'll send you a how-to video and just have people start filling it out. And it's amazing because it's, I hate to say this, but it is a practice building tool because you can actually show people improvements or not. Like if they're not getting better, hey, you got stresses here, you're not handling, you know, what do we need to do? And again, you're just doing your job. Meanwhile, you're also helping out the profession. And when it's published, you can say, hey, to your kids or whoever, hey, I was a part of this, and this is the largest study ever done. And, and, and I have to say this. This is a resource I strongly feel that the whole profession needs to get on board and to yeah. utilize. I'm going to get on board with it. When people listen to this podcast, if you were driving, don't try to write down the URL. We're going to have the blog post with a link to it. I'll put the link okay. in the blog post so people can do it because I want awesome. them to get enrolled. I know we'll yeah. talk about it mile high. So yeah. I'm re I, I, all props to you for doing this and all the other work you do. It's, it's, it's important for the whole profession. So thank you for much. I know you – are you still okay in time? Can I wrap up? Yeah, we're, I got one more thing to say. I got No one's knocked on the door yet, so I'm good. All right, go for it. Is it simply that – um, some like it, the the cost of it because people think about cost is literally it would cost you the same amount if you did have a Survey Monkey account, and but again it doesn't score it for you, so that's basically where I try to spin is like hey listen this is just something you should be using anyway, and it's minimal dollars it's not it's not two hundred dollars a month or three hundred it's literally forty bucks was a dollar a day which it would cost you your staff to have to score those things. It's so awesome. I'm just so excited we were able to build it. More and than I got to tell you this. I'm excited about it because what happens is just people think just about their own office. You said to have the end of the year report of this is the quality of life improvement and I can show practice members that. That's huge. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Um, and so thank you so much for taking your time. I know you're a busy guy. So much. Thank you for being on the podcast, um, and thank you for coming out to Mile High. I can't wait for people to hear you. And yeah. if, if you like this episode, share it with someone else. Share the blog post or share the iTunes link, and uh, join us in August because you're going to get more Dr. Curtis for Dorchek and more from the foundation and more from uh, chiropr chiropractors from all around the world there, www.milehighchiro.org, August 17th to 20th. We'll see you there. Thank you so much, Dr. Curtis. Oh, thanks so much. One more thing. Go for it. <laughs> is uh, I guarantee what I have to go over at Mile High, no one has ever heard before. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Go Thank save you so much. lives, okay? Because I know that's what you're doing in your office. Thank you so much. All right. Like our page on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash Mile High Cairo.